everybody. So we've got a lot of really cool stuff that's happened over the last couple of years. New investigations, new locations, great evidence. And 2022 is looking to be pretty much the same. We're already booking some amazing locations and some pretty cool investigations. However, before we get into 2022's investigations, we thought it'd be good to take a look back at 2021. And what we're gonna do today is look at some of our favorite pieces of evidence from last year. Now notice I said favorite and not best. And that's because, well, best is pretty objective. Um, now, while these favorites, in our opinion, are some of the best, there are reasons why they are our favorites. So after we show the clip, we'll talk a little more and do a bit of a deep dive on why these pieces of evidence stood out among everything else that we collected. Are list videos cliched? Of course. Are they fun? Absolutely. So before we get to 2022, Let's go back and look at our top five favorite pieces of evidence from 2021. Honorable mention, Seneca Falls two-way radio voice. I'm gonna start with an honorable mention. It might be cheating, but I, I wanted to talk about this one even though it didn't quite make the top five. Uh, the Seneca Falls Historical Society, uh, we were there last May and something happened involving one of our two-way radios that was just um, utterly fascinating. And we were all in the basement, and while we were in the basement, um, the radio in the office upstairs started going off. It went off about six times. And when we put out the video of that investigation, we actually documented that. While we were all downstairs, a two-way radio we left in the first floor office began to make sounds, as if it were being used. What makes this odd is that we all had radios with us downstairs in the basement, but only the radio in the upstairs office went off. What is that? Do you have a radio upstairs? What was that? Did somebody hit their radio? Or During one of the radio bursts, we thought we heard a voice come through. We couldn't make it out in the basement, but one of our upstairs cameras clearly captured what sounded like a child greeting us. What makes it the most fascinating is that that with all the interference on that radio, there was a voice that came through, not once, but twice. Now, we don't know what it said the second time, but it is very clearly, hello, coming through that radio. And we were able to, um, to say this is not just the radios malfunctioning because these radios are all set to the same frequency when we're together. They're all on channel one, two, three, whatever. Only that radio in the office had the voice come through it. The radio that myself, Tim, and Emily had in the basement didn't make a sound. It's an amazing piece of evidence. It's the only type of that evidence we've ever really found. We have radio interference from time to time, but never anything where it says hello through the radio where none of the other radios pick it up. Uh, fascinating piece of evidence, and I really wanted to include it uh, on this list. Number five, hold on, I say. This is on the list because of the tone of the voice. Uh, when we helped the staff of Hyde Hall investigate last May, uh, this voice really stood out. And what's interesting about it is it seems to be reacting to me tripping over something in the other room, which you'll see in this clip.
Again, what, what makes it one of our favorites is just how annoyed she sounds. Like she is offended about whatever I just did and is telling me, you know, hold on, I say, which is also, if you think about the words um, outside of the, of, the, of the tone of them, um, it's very appropriate for that 19th century era. I mean, nobody says, hold on, I say anymore. That is very much an era specific uh, reaction to what I was doing and an expression of being pretty annoyed at me at the same time. Number four, it has eyes. At the Wayside Irish Pub, uh, it was pretty well noted that my fear of mannequins and statues really came to a head. Um, that's actually called automatonophobia, uh, believe it or not, there is a name for it. However, as much as those mannequins bothered me, the next week or so, we were up at Grapevine Farms investigating, and in the basement where the spirit of Michael is known to reside, there was a skeleton mannequin hanging from the wall, an old Halloween decoration. As Emily and I turned the camera on, we were commenting on it. And as you'll see in the clip, uh, someone, uh, someone or something commented back and had something to say about what we were talking about. In this case, Emily and I were walking back upstairs after turning on the camera. I was commenting on the Halloween decoration hanging on the closet and pointed out that it was better than the eyeless one we saw at the Wayside Inn recently. Michael then chimed in, correcting me. Why we like this one so much is how just correct the spirit is. The mannequin we were talking about from Wayside that bothered me so much didn't have eyes. And when I said, at least it's not as creepy, at least it has eyes, unlike the one at Wayside, the spirit corrected us. And it's that kind of intelligent response uh, that makes it one of our favorites from last year. Number three, yes, I have. Going back to Hyde Hall again, uh, this voice is just an incredible piece of evidence. Um, as John Henry, one of the staff members, was talking about a very specific part of the room and the bust and personal possessions of a very specific person, he said, hey, you've come back into the house in a big way. And as you'll see in the clip here, the spirit responded. Anne, are you in here? Anna, we have your dress, your portrait, and your bust. You've come quite fast into the home as of late. Dress, your portrait, and your bust. You've come quite fast into the home as of late. What we absolutely love about this clip is the first person, the use for, yes, I have, the just sort of tone of it. Yes, I have. Like, yeah, I know, I'm back in the house. But also, it's one of the few instances where we can actually infer what spirit we're talking to. In many of the places we go, you, 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 you can guess who you're talking to, but very rarely is it as obvious as in this situation. We have no other choice but to conclude that we were talking to this specific spirit because as we're talking about her bust, as we're talking about her possessions, when we say, hey, you're back in the house, she says, yes, I have. It's awesome, and that's why it's one of our favorites. Number two, conversation in an empty house. The Sharon Springs farmhouse was our first investigation from last year, and it was a very different one. Emily had just had ankle surgery, so it was just myself and, and Dave, who was his first investigation. And it was a residential investigation, one of those rare ones where the, uh, the owners gave us permission to publish what we found. And most of the time, residential investigations don't lead to anything. Well, this one did. And it started pretty quick. Um, as you'll see in the clips, I kept hearing people talking, and I commented on it several times during the investigation. And when Dave and I went outside to take some photos around the exterior of the location, we caught a conversation when no one was in the house. All during the investigation, we kept hearing what sounded like people talking inside the house. And that we come with respect for who you are, for who you were, 
and the story that you have to tell. I hear talking. Mm -hmm. It's not cars either. Every once in a while, I think mm -hmm. I hear somebody talking. Am I crazy? It was while we were outside that our camera in the living room captured two voices with a clear vocal tone. First, a man speaks, and then about 10 seconds later, a woman responds. I can't wait to listen to the cameras because I swear I hear people talking. I know. Initially, I did as well. What makes this one one of our favorites is just A, how unique it is, and B, that it just validates everything. Every feeling of like you're talking and you're hearing somebody talk and you know you're hearing somebody talk. And it is so satisfying to have the cameras find what you think you've been hearing all night. It doesn't happen often. It happened in this instant. And there's a male and a, and a female talking too. And there were no females on the property that night. Remember, Emily was not a part of this investigation. So it's cool for a lot of reasons. And that's why it is one of our all time favorites and one of our favorites from last year. Number one, talking to Sarah at the Wayside Irish Pub. This was our favorite one from last year, and, and it really wasn't much of even a conversation among us. This is an amazing series of spirit box voices. And as you'll see, uh, the same voice comes through in the third floor of the Wayside Irish Pub three consecutive times in a row. Who's that? Uh, I was just going to try and get... Uh, I was just going to try and get... Is that you, Sarah? Why did you hang yourself? You're sorry. But it had to happen. That right for you. There's something quite voice on mm -hmm. it. That right for you. There's something quiet, voice on mm -hmm. huh? And you have you have a light anomaly circling around you. Sarah, is that you? Sarah, I think you are in here with us. Sarah, I think you are in here with us. What makes this so interesting to us is first of all you have stories of a spirit named sarah residing there and you get the name sarah you have the stories that she was a young girl that is a young girl's voice you also get some desperation and why can't you see it and what i think what we feel is being conveyed there you'll notice in that clip there's all these light anomalies around me which and light anomalies can be the partial manifestation of a spirit is sarah trying to manifest and is that how she's manifesting and she's asking why can't you see it um there's a desperation in that uh which is heartbreaking and fascinating all at the same time and then at the end there that same voice says hello all three of those happened within about four to five minutes of each other and it's rare that that happens and it didn't happen again that night and but it's just an amazing level of communication um, and intelligence from a spirit that we are hoping to get to know uh, even better the next time we go back. So there you go, uh, a look back at some of our favorite pieces of evidence from last year. We are looking forward to gathering all sorts of great evidence again this year. We are going to some new locations. We're going back to some old locations. We also, it looks good that we might have our first ever investigation actually in Orange County, New York. Um, it's been a running joke 
uh, among ourselves and if you followed us over the last couple of years that we had not done anything uh, in Orange County. It looks good. It looks like that's going to be coming up soon. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and, you know, just basically, you know, some changes. Uh, we're going to, you know, the videos are going to look a little different. Some of the titles are going to look a little different. I get bored easily. Uh, so you might notice uh, the videos might look and sound a little bit different. But the investigations remain the same. The people remain the same. And we remain as dedicated as we ever have to answering questions about the paranormal, helping people live with the paranormal, and just trying to figure out what is going on in this realm that is so fascinating and just reveals itself to us in such interesting and sporadic ways that it just keeps us coming back, especially when we capture fascinating, interesting things like what we just showed in the video today. So. We'll be back soon to talk about some of our upcoming investigations. Thank you all for watching. Like, do all that liking, subscribing stuff if you if you if you haven't. Uh, that always helps uh, us to uh, get our stuff out to you. And everybody, take care, and we'll see you very soon.